Welcome back to episode 53 of the Next Generation podcast. We're very grateful to have Cam Kirker here, who actually competes at track and field at Penn State University. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. We're excited to have you here. So tell us a little bit about how your journey started with getting into track and field. How did you find your passion for it, especially, you know, being a, a decathlon competitor? How did that all uh, come to fruition? Yeah, so I basically I was a football player, basketball player my whole life um, and did that for quite a while until about my junior year of high school. And I tore my hamstring at a combine for football and I was like gaining some traction with recruiting for that. But once I tore my hamstring, I was like, that's kind of kind of over because junior year is like the biggest year for recruiting. And so I was kind of just sitting there doing rehab and I was like, I'm like kind of all right at track. I was like, maybe I should like try to figure it out. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do all these events. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm actually not that good at any of these events to go D1. I was like, I don't really know what to do. And then my pole vault coach was like, well, he's like, you're not insane at one event. He's like, but you're really good at all of them. He was like, do you want, he's like, have you ever done a decathlon? I was like, I have no clue what that is. I was like, I don't even know what that is. And he was like, well, I signed you up for the junior Olympics and you're doing a decathlon there. And I was like, all right, sounds good. And then I went down to Jacksonville, Florida, did my first decathlon. I placed like 12th in the country. And I was like, I think that's, that should be good enough. And then Awesome. I just stuck with that, emailed a bunch of coaches, and then I was like, all right, I, I think this is my my new thing. I like the decathlon, and I want to want to keep doing it. That's unreal. And it, it's so funny how you see that, like, the transition, right? You know, you have a yeah. setback that, you know, of, of getting hurt in football, but then, like, okay, like, other options. Like, you know, you, you had that passion for track and field, and your coach is like, hey, you know, Kim, you can actually do this, right? And so then actually going to compete and see that like, you actually have the ability and skills to go in and pursue it further. And, yeah, exactly. and now, you know, being at Penn State, like, tell us, like, what has that been like, you know, for you? What does your kind of like day-to-day look like, especially with in-season and there's a lot to juggle with academics and now with NIL and different things going on? You know, how do you balance your day-to-day to be as productive as you can? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm not going to lie. It is so hard. Like, like it is so <laughs> difficult. Like, I don't think a lot of people, like, realize how difficult it is to be, like, a student athlete, like, at any level, really. Yeah. But, like, here it's, like, we have study all hours. That is, like – you got, you got to get those done or else you, you like will be suspended from practice or you'll add time onto everybody else's study hall. So like, I've got to go do that, but it also helps me get like the academic side out of the way. So that's like kind of covered. And I go in there for three hours a week, get all my work done and that's good. But like, I'll, I'll wake up, go to class and then right leaving class. I have to run from one side of campus all the way to the track, start practice, get my treatment, warm up all that stuff and then i'm usually at the track for around like four hours like usually like two and a half to three hours of practice and then four hours of i mean one hour of treatment maybe some lift depending on the day and then like you the hardest part is fitting in time to eat because you're just out like at a track all day running and we burn so many calories and you just like will forget it to eat and so that's like the main thing that's been hard for me to juggle but everything else kind of just fits itself in and you just kind of like go with the flow and it, it works itself out. But with NIL now, like luckily I have Juwan and like, he helps me a lot. Like I I honestly don't think I would be doing as much with NIL if I didn't have him because just the time aspect, but he takes care of so much for me and I, I get everything done as best I can. And it's been working out to, to the best it could so far incredible yeah i mean and i think that's what a lot of people that aren't in a position of a student athlete in this day and age don't understand is like there's so much to to juggle right and and being able to do that effectively and even say like you know you being a track athlete but still you know trying to find time to eat in between you know your your classes and and, and practice and and, and meets and everything else that's going on you know it's it's a lot to to be able to to handle it sometimes And, and i think you know, going more into the camaraderie that you've built with, you know, people on your team, your coaches, you know, how does that uh, play into just, you know, being able to help you uh, grow as an individual? I mean, it's been like, you you find so many people from different walks of life, like on the team, because like in high school, it's like, you've grown up with these people, like you kind of know their families, like everything about them. But then it's like, I come here and it's like, we have 
like my one of my friends Jakob, he's like from Poland. Like he hasn't seen his family in like months, but he's like from a whole different like style of life. And so like I learned so much from him. Like I have roommate, like one of my roommates is from uh, the Caribbean. He's insane, like three time All American. But like awesome. so like he grew up in the Caribbean. Some people grew up in Poland, like just all over the place, Jamaica. Like you you just don't know like where everybody's from, but it kind of like makes you more well-rounded because you understand like more about the world than just like where you grew up. Cause like I'm from Richmond, Virginia. And it's like, yeah, it's a like diverse area, but you don't have people that just came from Poland or the Caribbean or anything like that. Yep. And like my coach is from the Bahamas. So like, I've just learned so much about just interacting with people throughout my time here, which I think has helped me grow as a person and like being more understanding and like just being able to learn like every day. And I think it's spot on, you know, just learning about the different cultures and stuff and, you know, just being fortunate enough to be able to experience that and understand those walks of life and how you can play a part of that and, and, and being able to, you know, be part of that culture and that team um, and, and having the mentorship and guidance from, from coaches and other people around you um, and even like the support, right. And helping with NIL and different things that's going on. Uh, it helps you, be the best version of yourself Absolutely. And, and be able to experience, you know, everything that you want to do and accomplish at Penn state, even beyond your career. And yeah. I think a big thing that I wanted to dive into was, you know, the fan engagement, I think this past couple of years is really just skyrocketed and, and it's for all different divisions, right? Even at the high school level. So how do you in the, and do the best that you can in engaging with, with fans and, and that show you support when they're at your meets and, and be able to watch your practice and, and be able to compete you know, for Penn State. Yeah. So one thing is like, I, I mean, like if, if your teammates with me, you know it, some people might not, but like, I definitely like to like put on a show. <laughs> like, like I'm I, like, I know track, it's like a hard thing to like watch, but it's like, if, if I clear a bar and pole vault, like I'll be like looking at the crowd, I'll throw my hat like on the ground. I'll like be screaming. I'll be, like I love it. get everybody awesome. like go and like start a clap. Like, I just like to get everybody involved with like what, I'm doing because like, obviously, like I grew up playing football, basketball. It's like, if you have the ball in football or basketball, everyone's cheering your name, like clapping, like all this stuff. And with track, yep. there's so much going on that I'm like, well, if people came to like watch track, I was like, well, I'm going to make them like focus on what I'm doing for a few seconds. And then they can go back to like going on. And I feel right. like, I feel like that helps with the engagement. Cause I mean, if somebody goes to one meet and they see me at the next and they like see me like long jumping or pole vaulting, they're like, oh, this is the kid that like loses his mind if he like does well. And so that's, that's awesome. like, that's one of my favorite things to do. And like, I've, I've had like a lot of kids that are from like the area that are like trying to come to Penn state and they'll like be at the meets and they're like, Oh, I want to do multis. And they like, come talk to me after. And I'm like, do it. Like I didn't start doing it till my junior year. I'm like, you're way ahead of me already. Like do it. Like if you need any help, I'm like, follow me on Instagram. I'll follow you back. Like DM me, tell me what you need help with. And I'll, I was like, I'll get you in touch with my coach. If you need, like do whatever yeah. you need. But, but yeah, I, I definitely like, uh, like the rise in fan engagement because like when I started track it wasn't really like it's not a spectator sport per se but I think that's growing with all the personalities in track and I kind of want to continue that right no 100 percent. and I think like you, know, you said as an example of someone if, if fans that come and watch you one time and they see like how passionate you are you're, you're celebrating you're doing different, different things that's like engaging their attention yeah. And then they go see you again and they, and they, you know, they say, Oh, you know, Kim's that guy that's like, you know, just has so much energy. Like I want to, I want to keep watching him compete. Yeah. And then they see your teammates, other people do the same thing, right. And similar things in their own, own personality yeah. and it's powerful. And I think that's where, you know, going into, you know, a huge topic we're about to dive into with NIL, it's allowing you to, you know, create your own brand and, and actually bring in and attract the people you want around it. And you really couldn't do that before NIL era. Um, and, you know, legitimately. Right. So yeah. uh, seeing that happen now is, is incredible. And now kind of going into NIL, what were your initial thoughts when it all happened? You know, how has it helped you with your own personal brand? Um, I know you have, a, you have a huge audience on TikTok and other platforms, too. Um, you know, what, what can you tell us about that and how it's how it's helped you out? Um, it's it's been a, a lot for me. Like, I thought it was kind of like going to be nothing because one, it's like when I was coming into college, like, I was like, well, I'd like, I run track and I was like, and I'm not like proven. I'm like, it's going to be like difficult. And then I just kind of like texted a few companies. I was like, I 
do this at Penn State. I have this many followers. I was like, if you're interested in partnering, like, let me know. And then I would, like got like a reply from like five of the 10 companies that I texted. And I was like, oh, I was like, this is pretty cool. I was, like, I didn't really expect this. And then once I got that, I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to keep going. And then I would just text more companies. And then I was like, I'm going to text even bigger companies. I was like, just see if it works. And I would just realize like worst they can say is no. Best they can say is yes. And and then I was like, I'll, I'll text anybody. Like I've texted like Louis Vuitton just for fun. I'm like, it's I'm awesome. like I'm like, maybe they're going to hit me back sometime. Why not? You know, but, <laughs> if Louis Vuitton's listening to our audience, yeah, Tim seriously. Kirker is, is calling your name. <laughs> seriously. But they, but like, it's just helped me a lot. Like, I mean, in college, like you need like some spending money. Like there's always times where it's like, you don't have money and you need a little bit of extra money. And right. I feel like NIL helps with like the athletes where like, we can't really get consistent jobs to work during like the school year, especially like during season. And so like for that, it's like, if I get paid for a brand deal, I'm like, all right, like I have some extra food like for a few weeks or like put it towards like rent, like stuff like that. hundred percent, hundred percent. I think that's across the board where it's helped so many athletes be able to, to utilize it in that fashion and to be able to even give back, right? You're seeing athletes that are making big deals and they give back to their family or their friends or the community um, or their teammates, right? Gifting different, you know, you know, gifts to their teammates and coaches. So it, it's like, there's, there's such a big th- thing beyond the surface level with NIL that it really helps at a deeper level in all different aspects of your life. And even, you know, after your career, you know, that's our big focus at first is like, how can we help student athletes like yourself benefit now, but also set up a strong foundation that can help you after your athletic career, right? As you go in and maybe start your own business or do different things in the real world, right? You know, beyond your athletic career. Um, And it's powerful. And I would say, you know, Kim, if you could give any tips for the youth in our audience, you know, whether it's content creation or, or, you know, even just putting yourself out there with your brain and talking to these executives and companies, how, what, what tips would you give, you know, for, for the youth right now listening in? Um, I would definitely say just be true to yourself. Like that's, that's the main thing. I know when I started doing NIL, I, I wasn't really true to myself. I was kind of like, I mean, I'll partner with this brand if they're going to pay me. But now I'm like, especially like, like I say, like with Jawan, like Jawan is basically like, he's, he's my NIL agent, but he's also like, best friend mentor like all that all that combined and he was like dude like don't do a deal if you like don't actually want to use the product or don't actually want to do this and that's like helped me a lot like now i'm now every time i make content for a deal i know i like actually like it like i know i want to do that but yeah like staying true to yourself is definitely like my main thing that i'm like sticking with now because i used to have a lot of like not good times like making content on tiktok because i was like yeah this is like blowing up i'm like but i don't do not like doing this I was, it would be like the tiktok like dances and stuff i'm like dude i'm like i don't know why these just keep getting views because now i feel obligated to do it and now it's like i'll make a video and i'm like this is what i eat in a day as a d1 athlete and that like matters to me because it's it's like it's actually me like that's who i am is like i'm a d1 athlete and i like to eat so like i, love that. I actually just watched that video the other day so i love what, what yeah. you're doing with that stuff so it's it's Appreciate awesome it. it's awesome man that's great. Yeah, no, that's and I think that's, that's so true, right? You know, staying true to yourself. Um, and that allows you to actually go out there and, and, and do productive things, right? Whether it's helping brands or whether it's for your sport or whatever else it is that you're doing, you know, it, you're staying true to yourself at the end of the day. So you're passionate about it. And, and yeah. like when you have a brand that comes to you that like, you're like, hey, you know, this is actually going to help me with injury, injury prevention with track and field. Like I actually want to support this and maybe I can do even more than just an initial deal. Maybe I can do more and help them out on a bigger scale. So it's like just doing things like that, like you said, that is, you know, staying true to who you are and, and, and what you really like to do. Exactly. What would you say looking back on, on your career so far has been one of the most memorable moments, you know, in, in the sport of, of track and field? Um, I think for me personally, it was pen relays in high school. And honestly, like my like most memorable moment changes so much, like as the year goes on. But like as pen relays relays is coming up, like I, as I like watch those videos, it was just such a great experience because it's like one of the oldest track meets in the world, one of the oldest like tracks in the world, and like me and my friends, we went there. Like we're all in high school and we've like never been to Philadelphia. We're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then we go out there and we run, and we were going against teams that were like from Jamaica, like from different countries that were like also high schoolers, and we like won our heat of the four by one, and like all of us were just like losing our mind. And it's like, 
stadiums packed. Like there's fans from Jamaica. Like they have like uh, the noisemakers. There's fans from like our school that like can't even hear them because there's only like eight of them. And Incredible. like it was just the craziest atmosphere. And like when we won our heat, like we're all like trying to hide the baton, like <laughs> yeah. the, the pen relays baton. We're like, we got to keep it. We got to keep it. And we're just like high-fiving each other, like just jumping up and down, so like funny. screaming. And then everybody's just telling us, they're like, you got to get off the field. And it was like, <laughs> that was just the most like electric experience was being there. That's unreal. And, I, and just looking back on that, man, you got to just appreciate like st- it's moments like that, that, you know, you can always just reflect on, you know, even d- decades after and, and be able yeah. to see different things like that. And, um, you know, I would say, you know, kind of how, what you've said so far, Cam, what's kind of like the overall vision, you know, for your career, you know, even if it's something that you want to be doing after your athletic career, what does that kind of look like if, you, if you've taken some thought to that? Yeah, so I, I want to stick with track as long as I possibly can. Uh, that's definitely like my main goal. But in the grand scheme, like NIL has kind of helped me realize this is like, I want to like work for brands in like the PR aspect for them. Like I want to yeah. like help write them like press releases, help with crisis management, stuff like that, marketing, advertising. And I think NILs help with me like realize that a lot. Um, but that's just like what I want to do. I'm like, I have so much fun working with these brands. Like I have so much fun, like making content and I like don't want, don't want to have to stop. That's awesome. I love that. And, and I think that gives you, you know, like that, that's that starting step, right? That's yeah. like, okay, like you, you know, NIL allowed you, it opened up the door for you to start doing this and then realizing, okay, like, you know, I'm still passionate about my sport and other things that I do, but I also love, you know, creating content for the companies that I love working with. And like, how can I do that on a bigger scale after you graduate from Penn State and move on with your career? And and, and looking at it like that, it's like, you know, that that's what, what it's all about is, is just kind of realizing like, you know, you're not going to have the answer right away, but you're going to keep taking steps towards stuff that you love doing and seeing how you can continue that on, you know, even after your, your athletic career is over. Uh, has there been any things, you know, when you do have time throughout your day or even maybe in the off season, you know, what are some of your other side hobbies or passions and stuff you'd like to do like outside of track? I love fishing and golf. Like I just, I'm very, I'm a very simple guy. Like if it's just <laughs> going to take like hours out of my day and I'm doing nothing, I like it. Like, because I'm always on the move, like, if I can just golf and walk at the slowest pace ever for a few hours or just sit with a fishing rod and like eat yeah. sandwiches, like I'll do that all day. But Unreal. those are my two favorites. And then just having music at all times. Like I just love music. Yeah. And I'm sure all of that just, you know, takes you away from, you know, just clearing your head, right. You know, mental health is so important, right. And more than now than ever, you know, especially as much as your physical health, but just being able to, you know, just take a step away from things, decompress, you know, so having those hobbies and other things that you can still be passionate about and enjoy, right, is, is important. And, you know, kind of wrapping up here, um, what would be, if you've thought about any plans, you know, giving back to your community back home, you said you're from Richmond, Virginia, or even, you know, at Penn State, what are some plans you've thought about of how you can kind of give back and, and make an impact in your community? Yeah, definitely. I've, I've always wanted to, like, coach camps, like, in my area, like, four track, like, I, like obviously I don't play football, but I could like help coach a football camp. But like I want to, I want to coach camps for like kids because I know, like I didn't go to camps when I was little, or if I went to them, it was like a cash grab, and it was like nobody there knew what they were talking about. They were just having us run out there for fun, like make us think that we were going to Alabama to play quarterback. Um, so I definitely want to run camps, and I also want to start like food drives for the less fortunate in the inner city because I live on the outside of the city, and so like everything's great for me. Like, like, it's like, I can't complain. Like when I go in, like, it's not, it's not the greatest like area. And so I kind of want to like get back, like make sure there's food drives. Cause I mean, not everybody gets to be fortunate enough to like know when their next meal is. Sure. That's awesome. I love all that. And, and being able to, you know, take initiative to actually do that and, and make that action happen is, is incredible. And, you know, I'm sure your whole community is going to appreciate all that you continue to do and in and, and, and the future of everything that you have planned. It's it's impactful. And, and it's awesome to see that you're already thinking about things like that to uh, to really make that that impact. So every podcast episode, Cam, we always wrap up with this last question, you know, with our title being the next generation. What would be three pieces of advice that you would give to the next generation of athletes and the youth that, that looks up to you? Definitely. Like I said earlier, stay true to yourself stay competitive and do not be okay with losing. Those are my three things. Like 
I'm never okay with losing and I'm always very competitive and I'll always be myself while I'm doing both of those other things. Incredible. And that all kind of, you know, interweaves and, and ties in with each other. So appreciate that, Cam. Everybody, if you're listening to this episode, go shoot a follow to Cam all over social media. Stay tuned for his upcoming seasons and, and everything that he's doing with within the community as well. Cam Kirker here, track and field at Penn State University. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you.